Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This episode we have Netflix 219th film from 2020. It's the Canadian action thriller The Decline or Jesua Decline. Sorry, really bad French. It is directed by Patrice Laberte. It stars Guillaume Lorin, Rial Bosse, Marc Andre Grondon, and Marie Evelyn Lassard. I'm Jesse. I'm here solo. Apologies for my pronunciation for a lot of those those names and words. Um, I watched this film in French, so I didn't listen in, in the English dub or anything like that. So I'm looking forward to talking about this one, The Decline. If you haven't seen this film and you want to avoid any spoilers, please give us a pause and come back later on because I'm going to jump into this and talk about our fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film is all about. So for The Decline, this is uh, in a world where everyone is awaiting its destruction and a man joins a survivalist training camp to prepare prepare himself further. All right, let's let's talk about how this one got to Netflix. So this is Netflix's first production in Quebec ever, which is uh, which is interesting. I sort of mentioned before the, there is an English version of this where the actual original cast dubbed their own dialogue to ensure that the English accent of the um, Quebecan uh, language sort of was appropriately represented. So that's a, a pretty good little detail that they went into to sort of make this as authentic as possible. This one was released at the Quebec Cinema, or the RVCQ, on the 27th of Feb in 2020, before hitting Netflix worldwide on the 27th of March in 2020. It won one award. It was nominated for a further 12. They were mainly Canadian awards are for editing, producing, visual effects, makeup, and sound, acting, so a big range of awards, all at Canadian um, ceremony, so pretty much uh, well-loved in Canada um, from the, the look of things. Translations across the world for this one. This one in Spanish is called Survival Mode. In Arabic, it's called The Chaser. In Finnish, Italian, it's called Fight for Survival. In German, it's called Under the Sinking. Interesting uh, title there. In Greek, it's called Until My Last Breath. These are all pretty good titles. Uh, in Israel, it's called Near the End. In Japan, it's called Downfall. In Panama, it's called Until the Fall. In Russia, it's called Doom. In Sweden, it's called Before the Doom. And in Turkey, it's called Doomsday is Near. So all pretty uh, negative sort of words about the end of the world, Doomsday, everything's coming to an end. What are we going to do as humanity uh, to survive? And, And that's pretty much what this film does or talks about. The consensus for this one. So on Rotten Tomatoes, this sits at a 91%. On 11 reviews so that that is definitely fresh super high the audience has a little bit lower at 63 percent and that's on more than 100 ratings on imdb it sits on a six out of ten on exactly 9,000 ratings when i check so that's a, a pretty impressive score on letterbox it sits at a three out of five two which is a very solid score on five and a half thousand ratings um, and it has been logged by over seven thousand though so overall for an international film um, in the non-english language quite a few people have seen this pretty positive reception and what are my early thoughts though i think uh like this has a real brisk runtime which is really good it makes it a real easy watch i think there's great tension throughout the social commentary works um even if it is jammed down your throat uh, the whole way through and it doesn't necessarily take a side on, on what you should uh go with for that commentary either so overall i recommend this one i think it's worth a watch so let's sort of get into the the crux of the film and talk about some of the characters so I guess our, our main character is Antoine or Antoine. Um, this is a guy who's got a family. Um, he's obsessed with survival. He does drills about survival and escaping the house with his wife and his daughter to sort of ensure that they're ready for the downfall of society. And he's sort of really interested in, you know, how they can survive if, if anything does sort of fall to pieces. And, and he sort of takes this inspiration from this guy called Elaine, who is this YouTube internet survivalist and he almost has it this elaine guy has a cult following uh he's paranoid himself about survival and i guess he's almost the villain of this film he expects society to fall but not from within his own sort of uh, ranks i guess so he is a guy who's ready to use force and violence but really only if necessary he does want to do things the right way and he does have a little bit of a soft side he plays the piano but he does snap very quickly as a quick temper um and you know we see this in a certain part when he doesn't want water to be wasted he spent his whole life sort of building this commune or this 
survivalist sort of retreat out in the middle of nowhere to be self-sufficient and be able to survive without any interactions from the outside world. So you can see why he's got, oh, he puts so much emphasis and energy into protecting it. Um, but he does invite a, a whole crew and a range of people, including Elaine who, um, uh, sorry, including Antone who, uh, manages to sort of sneak in in this last minute spot because someone's pulled out. So some of the other characters who are there on this uh, survival retreat, we've got Rachel, who was a former military person, um, has sort of given up on the military, can't do it anymore, a little bit hesitant and, and scared of the field because of some involvement in the past in the military. So her and um, Antone sort of get along pretty well. Um, there's another character called Anna, Seb, Francois, these are, these are all sort of side characters who um, are a part of, of, the, of the adventure of what's going on. And I think uh, Francois, without an, an incident with him in this film, the, the film could have gone in a completely different way, but he's sort of that turning point in this film. Um, the last sort of character I'll talk about is David, um, and he's sort of the, the extreme of where these people are at. They, they, the people there are there to support themselves and ensure they know what to do if the world does fall down. Um, whereas David, he sort of comes across as being indoctrinated by Elaine. He's very gung-ho and ready to do whatever is necessary, um, including violence, um, because of his, he's, he's a proud person and he's happy to rat the others out to impress um, Elaine. So that's that's a gist of, of some of the characters. Um, let's talk about the, the director, Patrice Liberté. Uh, feature debut, a lot of TV, a lot of shorts, Another feature in 2022 with some um, of the same actors who are in this film as well, including um, Guillaume Lurin, who plays Antone in this. So um, interesting to check that one out possibly and, and see what the follow-up is like. And that leads us to scenes. What are some scenes in this one that I enjoyed? So I think there's a scene where the, the, the group are all together and they have this discussion of what to do. And I have spoiled, said there's spoilers. So they have this discussion of what to do uh, with a body. Um, and I think that was really effective. There was no right or wrong way of dealing with it. Um, and then we sort of see Elaine sort of as the leader or the, the owner of this area sort of go ahead and, and take it into his own hands and, and dispose of this body. It sort of made it really clear as a character for him that he was gonna do whatever he needed to to protect his lifestyle. Um, there's a scene that involves a death with wire. I'm just gonna put that in there because it was pretty um, impactful. And, and the only other thing I'm gonna say, because as much as it was obvious there's a scene where Rachel and Antone go across a frozen river. And you, you know what's gonna happen if you walk across frozen ice in a film, uh, but the ice crack completely got me, like threw me in. That was that was a standout moment. Um, things in this that I didn't really like. I think that, uh, you know, it is a survivalist movie and there's a, a scene where they dissect a rabbit. Um, I think probably just because I'm a little bit squeamish, but that one, I did not like that scene. Uh, there's a scene where Antone and uh, Rachel, they get back to their cars, which have been out in the snow, sort of covered up for days. And they just put the key in the ignition and with one twist, the the engine sort of uh, cracks over. And I just had to laugh because, you know, I'm used to a car going rattling. Like if it's been that cold for that long, I'm sure that um, it wasn't going to turn on straight away like that. Uh, and the only other thing, there's this sort of physical confrontation at the end of the film between uh, Elaine and Rachel in the house. And that just went on and on with physical combat backwards and forwards. It was got a little bit ridiculous and unrealistic. So that's the only other thing I didn't like in this. And, you know, a, a, it's a short runtime, so it is hard to sort of cover off and, and go into a lot of themes and ideas and a lot of detail. But, you know, they did talk a lot about the world going to hell um, and the need for people to prepare for it. And, and it sort of gives that a question, I guess, of what lengths would you go to or should you go to to survive? Um, because people at times can be their worst enemies. Um, and, you know, just because this this event is happening where the world's coming undone, what sort of, um, you know, ideas can we think about with peace? Will, will the world ever be peaceful? Are we in a stage where there's just going to be conflict forever and ever um, and we never have peace again? And, and some of these things that are that are sort of confronting to peace are the idea of immigration, which they touch on in this. I think there's a lot of displaced people they're talking about, like environment um, sort of refugees. And the feelings of a lot of these characters were quite clear in, in their thoughts. Um, and, and then as well about the government and what they're doing to sort of help out or, or not help out in this case, because they talk about gun control. And realistically in this film, if you didn't have guns, a lot of this stuff wouldn't have happened. Um, 
And the other idea too I sort of touched on was global warming. Um, they sort of talk about endemics, pandemics, economic conditions. These are all things that are probably pretty true to, to really any audience, no matter when they watch this film. Uh, and that leads me into what I took away from this film. I think like it is set in this snow covered area and I felt cold even just watching, like freezing cold just watching this film. And it must have been one hell of a production for this cast and crew to work in such a cold environment. Uh, but the whole location was perfect. It, it just looked so good on the screen. Um, and I think that's almost ready. I think I'm ready to wrap this one up. I think I'm almost done. There's not much, I haven't got any questions or any ponderings to sort of talk about. So I'm gonna finish it off, give the film a rating out of five. This is well worth a watch for the craft of the film and the story. I think there's a, there is a higher chance that this isn't gonna be for everyone. And I completely get that. But if you wanna see a different take on a survival type of film, and it's not one that you know that those same sort of cliches that we see over and over again i think it's worth it i think it's worth it so i'm giving this a three out of five so jump on board if you're keen on seeing this one uh we have socials we have twitter we have facebook and instagram give us a follow give us a like if you can subscribe to us on your favorite um, podcast platforms too but the question i wanted to ask for social this week is how would you go surviving out in the wild i think i'd be no chance <laughs> putting it out there now i wouldn't feel comfortable um killing any animals to eat not very good at making a fire, I'd freeze, <laughs> just I'd be hopeless. So uh, maybe some people wouldn't, but I, I, I could not do that. Um, that. That brings us to the end for this episode. But we are back next week. Next week, we have a, another 2020 film, another international film. This one is the Indian Hindi language drama, Maska. It's directed by Niraj Uwani. It stars Manisha Kolala, Javed Jaffrey, Nikita Dutta, Prit Kamani and Shirley Satia. So if you're keen on checking out that one before next week, do so, give it a watch, and then jump on next Wednesday and we'll have an episode on that one for you. As always, thanks for keeping me company and I hope you've enjoyed this chat.